morning everybody. I just wanted you to see the camp I stayed at last night. Bit of a surprise. I was expecting a shelter a spot, like a normal one, but uh, nope. What I got was this. A crazy big giant tree under which there's a... Well, I'll show you. First off, I guess I'll show you this. The surrounding area is pretty cool. It's in the backyard of this awesome house. As you can see, there's a company dog, company, to keep me company, uh, which has been pretty cool. Look at the idyllic nature of this place, huh? Fireplace, breakfast thingy, and up there is where I slept. Isn't that cool? There's my bike parked, a uh, little outhouse, because everybody needs a little outhouse made of doors cool a little heart shaped logo on there as as they need and look at that how cool is that I mean we're really pretty high up for a tree house this is really well done yeah tree just kind of comes up the middle there it's really cool and here's the entrance a lot of mosquito netting behind this little, uh, <laughs> cute little house. I mean, look at this. But look at that. Look at how cool that is. Little cozy place. There are a few skins there from animals that I actually slept on. <laughs> so yeah, that was my night. How was yours? <laughs> See ya. Yo. So here's an advantage to riding a bike. Ah, there's so much less line in line one. That is good fucking timing. Oh, that's good. I get to board with these bikers, look at them. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. All right, let's go, lads. And off you go. <laughs> I don't know. I, I love boarding ferries on a bicycle. It's so clearly not what it was made for, right? And you're sort of in the way, but you're sort of not, and everyone stares at you like, what the fuck is the guy on the bike doing here? Yeah, well, same as everybody else. Let's get the whole bun. Motor. Yes, Zack. <laughs> Alright, he's saying there's a hole like that, but it's down on the other end. So he told me to go for the hole on the other end. Ah, ha, ah. ah. Thank God for gears. And now, finally, I get to cross onto mainland Germany. God, that took forever. Woo. But hey, look at it. I guess from your point of view, it's just a bridge. 
pretty boring one at that. Which is why I'm going to try and show you what I'm seeing. Oh. Not bad, hey? Hey guys, I wanted to talk a little bit about expectations and stuff because I am beating myself up out here. Um, I'm now in the beginning of Germany in the top northern part and it's taking me hours to not really get anywhere. And it's, uh, I thought I'd grind out the sort of, what is it, 150 kilometers to Hamburg in, in a day. And I could have if it were sort of miles that I knew, but I don't know this area at all and it's all about I'm spending all my time going through uh, little towns and finding out I made a wrong turn and trying to have to go back and figuring out what they actually meant with this stuff and realizing that I am allowed to go on a road that I didn't think I was and, and it's all just taking time and energy and I'm, I'm getting through my energy stores both in my body and in my bag and it's just, uh, it's a mental exercise more than anything else and it's it's kind of beating me. Um, it's not beating me, it's just it's taking longer than I thought it would. So um, I have, I'm gonna have to change my plans. I'm not gonna make it to Hamburg today. So I'll do something else. But uh, yeah, don't uh, expect too much of yourself because you know, it could change. Okay, so I think I figured out Germany. In the beginning I was getting lost because I felt, I thought I had to follow all those little signs for bicycles and, and whatnot. And then I realized that they have bicycle and walking lanes combined on one side of the road and then came the epiphany I don't need all that shit I can just go I'm allowed to ride on these roads as long as I stay to my side and away from everything that's how I like to ride anyway to my right is a freeway that is where I'm not allowed to go this makes my route planning ten times easier because so I can just pick the big road head south and go and now I put my compass sort of a crude thing on there it means I can just basically follow that white um, rabbit if you will and I'll get there now I'm in a frantic speed uh, chase to sort of see if I can get Hamburg even though I missed all uh, lost all that time I'm probably not gonna make it but I'm trying to keep uh, relatively high speeds even this old beast is rocking 27 now that's in a headwind, mind you. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a shot. I'll try and reach Neustadt, and from there we'll see how much time I have to get to Hamburg. It's because I'm staying with a guy. I met, I haven't met him yet, but someone from Couchsurfing. And he was sort of half expecting me today. Um, see that yellow sign? I thought that meant uh, bicycles not allowed. It does not. It means a uh, main road or something. Anyway, back to grinding. See you guys. And I didn't make it. <laughs> no, I had to jump on a train when I got to Neustadt to, to make it to Hamburg that day. And for some reason, it was more important for me to get to Hamburg to chill with my host than it was to, to be you know, strictly uh, on, on a bike, even, even though it was a bike trip, you know. I think a lot of people would feel like that was a, a failure of, of planning and of, of a lot of things to, to have to take a train. But I honestly didn't feel that. You know, I um, it's a consequence of living the way I insist on living, to do it without a plan. And when you don't have a plan, then every once in a while, things are going to fall apart and change. And you have to be ready to uh, adapt to that. So, yeah, that's what I did. Anyway, I took this uh, completely filled train to Hamburg, which was awesome. And so when I got to Hamburg, I was met by this guy, my host from Couchsurfing. This is David Mango, the uh, awesome guy who uh, embodies everything great about Couchsurfing. I just um, uploaded my trip and told everybody, hey, I'll be in Hamburg these days. And straight after that, he invited me into his home and said, yeah, you can come here and, and chill for a couple of days. Just a, a beautiful gesture. We were quickly joined by this guy, the uh, naked Nicky, uh, adventurous traveler, also a couch surfer. He rocked up with um, uh, a dumpster diving food, so we just stayed in the first night, uh, had some beers and um, some dumpster food. Straight up my alley. 
and uh, we took all, all took sort of a day off from whatever we were doing um, to chill at cafes, walk around town, just uh, sort of do our thing. It was kind of a nice uh, break from things. Uh, Nikki is uh, really busy and always traveling and always moving, so I think he thought it was pretty cool to take a break off. And uh, I know David had quite a lot of issues with his visa and, and crap, so it was kind of nice for him to think about something else. So we had some wine on a bridge and just uh, walked around town and, and took the whole day off to do this bromance, which was uh, kind of fun, you know, taking in some sights, some views. Um, and an ancient uh, church from back when, which was bombed when the Nazis came through. Um, oh yeah, he took the time to sketch me. Check that out. Uh, David's handiwork. I hope he think it's, thinks it's cool. I'm, I'm uploading it. Um, oh yeah, the Red Baron um, mustache on my tattoo there. He was, uh, he was awesome. Uh, here's the old Elba Tunnel. More on that later. This is the route I took out of town. So yeah. This was uh, a cool uh, break off from uh, from an otherwise uh, very uh, on the road type um, trip, <laughs> obviously. That was cool. So thanks, Hamburg. Thanks, David. Um, see you next time, wherever you are. So yeah, um, stay tuned for my next video on my next day. Uh, that's when I went out of Hamburg and went on to Bremen and such.